Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are going to learn how to make a cord with a lucet fork. This is an excellent way to make a very quick, very consistent cord for drawstrings, shoestrings, purse handles, anything that you need to make a crocheted cord for, you can use this lucet fork and it goes so much faster. Let's learn how to make this cord today. To get started with your lucet fork, first you're going to hold it with your non-dominant hand. So I am right-handed, so I'm using my left hand here. If you are a crocheter, this is particularly, this method is particularly useful. It works the best for me, especially since I've been crocheting for a minute now. I'm gonna take my, my working yarn tail and I'm gonna put it straight through the center of the lucet fork in that hole. I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. This is going to be obviously the tail of your cord. So I'm gonna hold it down. I'm gonna pinch it, the lucet fork so that the yarn isn't going anywhere, right? Now I'm going to take the yarn, bring it straight up. And now we are going to form a figure eight around the tongs. So we're gonna take it up through the center. We're gonna go around this one, around the back, and around this one, okay? So we've got, looking at it, down, right? We're looking down at it. We're going to go around this prong, bring it to the back, now go around this prong, and bring it to the back, right? Now, we've got our figure eight here. It looks like an infinity symbol. What we're going to do to actually start the cord is I'm going to go around this prong again and bring it to the back. I'm going to pinch it with these fingers back here so that it doesn't go anywhere. I want this to be a nice and tight um, not super tight, but you want it to be nice and taut, right? So now I'm going to take these two loops right here. I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm going to carefully bring it over the top and off of the prong so that only this loop remains. So I'm going to take this one. You might have to kind of loosen up a little bit and getting started is always the hardest part. Isn't that true with just about anything? Take the one on the bottom, go up over that prong. Now it's kind of loose here, right? everything's loosey-goosey. Go ahead and pull the tail a little bit and keep this yarn in the back nice and tight. What I like to do as a crocheter, and this is why this method works so well for crocheters, I hold my working yarn here exactly how I would if I was to crochet. So now I've got, I know that this working hand works for me because that's how I crochet with it and I've got this nice tight tension here on this working yarn. One thing you want to do as you're crocheting or you're making your cord, you're not crocheting, <laughs> keep the center or the, the knot of the cord, try to keep it as close to center as you can. We're going to keep the tension high in this working yarn here and we're going to hold the tail down at the bottom with your fingers. Okay, to actually start making your cord, and this is what we're going to be doing the entire time, take your fork and rotate it to the left. Now we're, we've got these two loops again. We're gonna take the bottom one very carefully, go up over that prong, leaving the other loop there. Kind of pull this down just a little bit. See how it's kind of in the middle? It's okay if it gets listed off to one side because it's gonna change every time we rotate. Now we're going to do the same thing. Rotate to the left. Take that bottom loop, go over the top loop. Pull just a little bit, rotate to the left. Take that bottom loop, go over the top one. Right? Continue. That's all we're doing the entire time. Rotate, take the loop, pull it over the other one. Rotate, take the bottom loop, pull it over the top one. You can see that I'm kind of pulling my tension with my working hand as I do this. Rotate, hold with your fingers down here, take this one over the top one, and then kind of pull just a little bit. Rotate, and as you can see, we're starting to get a little bit of a cord here. Watch this loop. As I pull this one up over that one, see how that one got into more uniform shape? I'm gonna pull my working yarn down here, rotate. This is a big loop again, right? Let's pull this 
as I pull that, it gets to be the exact same size as the loops below it. And this, your tension or your consistency of your cord may vary a little bit until you get more confident making your cords. Practice makes perfect, as with anything, right? This is literally all there is to making a cord with a lucid fork, guys. It is so easy. Now, as this cord gets longer, I'm going to be able to pull it through this hole. That's perfectly fine. We're going we're gonna to use that to our advantage. Okay, rotate. Bottom loop, pull, over the top. Rotate. Bottom loop, pull, over the top. See how I'm kind of constantly pulling my tension? And that is why it's so great as a crocheter because I know that the way that I'm holding my working yarn here, I know that that works for me because I, that's how I crochet. Now you might notice as you're making these that your loops, sometimes if you don't pull your cord down a little bit and relax those loops, sometimes these loops can look like they're very short or flat. Um, if you just pull on your cord a little bit, that'll fix that right on up. So that's all you do. You just rotate, pull, rotate, pull, rotate, pull. So I'm going to continue making a good length of cord. We will hook back up when we're ready to fasten off. Isn't this easy? If I'm going to stop making my cord for a while, say I get a phone call or I need to use the restroom and I want to set it down, one thing that I do like to do is use a hair elastic, just a regular hair tie, and wrap it around the lucid fork like this twice to make sure that the, my loops aren't going anywhere. So it's not going to come apart as I, you know, abandon my project for just a few minutes. Um, or if you put it in your bag and you, one of these loops falls off, oh no, you know, it's awful. So you don't want that to happen. So I use an elastic hair tie for that purpose. Another thing to look for when you pick your piece back up and start working again, the way that we are using the lucid fork, we will always, always, always have the working yarn coming out of the back of the work. So if I pick it up and I see that this yarn tail is facing towards me, I know that I'm looking at the back of my work right now and I know that we rotate it every time, but as you go to rotate it, your working yarn should always be coming out of the back, just like this. So I know that I am holding it correctly now since my yarn is coming out of the back. I'm going to hold my yarn like I always do with crochet and I'm going to just continue picking up my loops. Watch how that left loop gets a little bit smaller when I go over and I'm going to tighten up my tension just a little bit. When you are ready to fasten off your cord, when your cord is the length that you need it to be, I've got a decent length of cord here, right? It goes so fast, I love it. One thing we're going to do, we want to remove these two loops from the prongs very carefully. Um, in order to do that, I like to kind of take my yarn needle here and pick up both loops like this and just kind of pull them over the ends. Because right now, let me pull my cord out of the center of the lucid fork here, let me put this up here. Now, these two loops are kind of big, right? And if you were to kind of try to cinch them up now, they would be really big. So I'm going to pull my working yarn. See how I pulled this in the back? This looks great, right? These loops are a lot smaller now. They're not nearly as big. I'm not going to take my needle out. I'm gonna pinch this. I'm going to cut the yarn over here. And then, without letting go of these two, I'm going to go ahead and put my yarn through the eye of the needle. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled my loops to where they're nice and small, and then I've taken that same yarn tail and I've threaded my needle. Now I'm just going to pull it straight on through. And that's all there is. Now what you might want to do as well, you could take it and go back through the first one here to further secure it to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And then what you could do if you wanted to, you could take this and just kind of weave it down through the center of your cord for a ways just to kind of hide the, the end there as well. Just kind of pull that through and we'll take that off of the needle 
We'll go ahead and clip this here. And there it is. There is our fabulous crochet, or not crocheted, lucid fork <laughs> cord. And it's just lovely. This could be work used for so many different things. And stay tuned because I'm using these in many things in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you are a cord making fool using your lucid fork. And I look forward to crocheting and creating more with you soon. Thanks for watching.